Very good morning to all of you. Welcome to the Let There Be Light program. A wonderful Sunday to all of you. And I hope that you are preparing yourself right now to join us on our 9.30 a.m. service. Okay, I'm saying this already now, so you may have time, okay, to prepare yourself and, and join us. Because today's Sunday, uh, or to, in our today's service, we will be, uh, it will be the Sunday of God's exaltation. And why have we called this Sunday the Sunday of God's exaltation? Because God wants to be exalted in our lives through the things that He does for us, through the things that He does in our life. For example, when you see a testimony here in the program, how do you feel watching that wonderful testimony, healing, deliverance, the way that God changed, transformed the life of that person. How do you feel? You feel happy or you feel sad? You rejoice within yourself or, or you feel down? You feel, you, you rejoice yourself, you, 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 you feel, um, uh, you, you even say, how it's possible that God can transform a life that way. So you exalt God through that when you see a testimony. So when we receive, when we receive in our life, the power of God is for us to do exactly the same, to exalt Him. And that's why we are encouraging everyone to join us. Today Sunday, in the Sunday of God's exaltation, even if you are downcasted, even if you have your life destroyed, your family destroyed, you feel sick, you feel sad, you feel empty. Well, that's the right moment for you to see the power of God in your life. I'll say it again. If you have your life destroyed, you feel sad, you feel downcast, casted, empty, you have family issues, you have, you, you have your life destroyed. Now is the right moment for you to see the power of God in your life and then you can exalt Him through the work that He will do within you. Let's watch this testimony that shows exactly that. You will see by the words of this woman how God did transform her life. There was a night where I got so drunk, I woke up, looked up and there was a guy walking over me. I looked down at myself, I was completely naked and at that moment I felt really ashamed. I felt like my dignity had gone. When I was young, I had a childhood where my parents weren't always getting on and I witnessed arguments between my parents and even though they tried their best, it left an impact on me because I didn't really have a reference to what true love was. Because I was abused at such a young age, I grew up thinking that I was really ugly and the thoughts in my head were, why me? And it started to affect me as I got older because I never trusted guys. Later on in life, I realized that I did want to be loved and I wanted to be able to give that love. I started looking in the wrong places, um, ended up in some volatile relationships, getting pregnant at a very young age. By the time I was 25, I had three children. Um, so all of this caused um, an impact on me. During the period where I was drinking and having that promiscuous lifestyle, um, I got into a relationship where it led to it being very violent. And there had been a situation where I was five months pregnant and he beat me and st was he was stamping on my head. I was on the floor. And in that moment, I just, knew that I needed to get out that situation. Because I never experienced that love that I was seeking for, I wanted to get that love from my children and to be able to give it to them also. Um, 
but it didn't happen like that. I turned to drink, I was very heavily dependent on alcohol. Even at the time, I didn't believe that I was that parent that was dependent on alcohol, but I would drink after putting them to bed. Because I had such bad eyes to men and my relationships weren't working out, I ended up meeting men online, invite them to my house, and then I would drink and we would sleep together. And that was a continuous pattern throughout my life. There was a time where I would be downstairs in my house entertaining these guys and then my daughter would come in and she would see me with different men on different occasions. There was another situation where I found myself outside the lift completely naked and I just remember looking up and a guy was walking over me and I felt so embarrassed. I felt like, how could I have drunk so much and not even known how I got here? The cleaners came and they gave me a towel and wrapped the towel around me and they were laughing at me. And that just made me feel really humiliated at that point. And in that moment, I realized that I needed to change my life. And I remember the invitation that one of my sisters had given me to come to the Universal Church. And soon after, I accepted and I came. When I arrived in the Universal Church, um, I wasn't expecting for everyone to be so friendly, welcoming. Um, even after the service, an assistant, she just hugged my children. I thought everyone was going to be looking down at me. I decided to keep going to the services because I realized that in the past, nothing worked. And so I gave my all. I kept on coming to the services, listening to the messages and started reading the Bible for myself. And one day I remember seeing a testimony of someone that had experienced abuse just like myself. And in that moment, I just broke down and I started crying because I was thinking, how is it possible that she overcame and I'm still here feeling this pain? I was 36 and still in pain and having that void inside of me. After listening to the testimony, I realized that I wanted to have what she had inside of her, which was the Holy Spirit. And I realized that in order to seek the Holy Spirit, I had to let go of the past. I had to forgive. There was a campaign that came up and I decided to give my all to make a covenant with God. Told him that I needed him, like I was nothing without him. I wanted that word to, to be filled until the moment that he came upon me. And that moment, it was like he was saying, you have me. After receiving the Holy Spirit, I had that assurance. I had peace. I had hope as well. In the past, I didn't have that hope. In the past, when problems came, challenges came, I ran to alcohol. Now, problems might come, challenges might come, but I run to God, I run to the altar and he gives me that hope and I know everything will be just fine. Today, I'm able to be an example to my children, to give them advice. I'm able to be an example to my family members, my dad, my mum. And I have a good relationship with my parents. Now my dad, we speak more now. And I'm an assistant in the church. I'm able to speak to souls. I want the souls to be able to have what I have received, to have that total transformation in their lives as well. Um, to be able to pass on that faith, to let them know that there is hope. After having the transformation in my life, I went through another challenge where I wanted to see a sister of mine that left the church to come back to the presence of God. And again, I decided to go to the altar to make a vow for my sister like Hannah did. I was being sincere with God. I was telling him, I want my sister to have what he had given me. So I didn't give up on her. So I was really stubborn and I entered into different relationships. I was just trying to search for something 
a feeling I was very empty inside. I had a void, but I always had my sister that was always supporting me, encouraging me to come back to church. And eventually the penny dropped. That was the day when I was assaulted at work. And I remember just being inconsolable. I didn't have anyone, even though I had people to turn to, I just felt like, because I was so inconsolable, let me just go back to the church. And when I went to the church, I went to the altar and I literally just cried my eyes out. So today I have the Holy Spirit and I have that, that patience and that peace inside. So even when I go through, for example, situations at work, um, the work that I do is not so easy, but I have that, that assurance that God will guide me and lead me through and give me that strength. Now she is able to be that light in the household of my family, my parents, and to be able to pass on the word to the others in the household also, which is all I can ask. Everything that I have today would mean nothing if I didn't have the Holy Spirit. He's the one that kept me safe, protected me, guided me, and gave me that peace, that freedom. I don't have to worry anymore. And now I have hope and I feel like I can overcome and anything that comes my way with him. What's been keeping you up at night? Problems at work, bad news, arguments with your partner, discouragement. We're available to talk to you right now. Call us 9602-9837. I'm sure that Sabrina would, wouldn't be able to imagine that one day she would enjoy life the way that she enjoys nowadays. Having peace, being a different woman, having a life, a true life, not a fake life, pretending that she was happy when she wasn't. Now she's happy. She has peace now and she can talk, she can talk about that. And the same thing you need to understand God wants to do in your life. So don't waste your time with negative thoughts. Don't waste your energies going after things or chasing your happiness, doing things that you know they will not work in your life because you have tried and they didn't work in your life. So that's, what, that's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. Hanging out with friends, going to parties and traveling, going on holidays, shopping. It's, it brings to you good moments. Yes, I wouldn't say no. Yes, they will bring to you good moments. But that's all. At the end of the day, you are the same. The sadness is there. The emptiness is there. And you cry. You cry alone because you feel ashamed to show to people how much you suffer. Because you want to show to everyone that you are happy. Oh yeah, you want everyone to know or everyone to think that you have a perfect life. Every time that you take a selfie and you post on your social media, you want people to think that you have a perfect life. And you know it's all fake. You know that. It's fake. But, well, you think, no, at least people, they think I have a good life. My friend, what's the point of people thinking that you have a perfect life when you yourself, you know you don't have it. You feel sad, you feel lost, you feel empty. Hmm? But you can change that, that's the point. That's why we are here in this Sunday morning because we want you to know that you can change that. You can change that situation. So if you, I don't know if you live close to Blacktown, to Chatswood or Liverpool, but if you, 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 can, you can still come to the 9.30 service, you have time. You have 
a little bit more than an hour to arrive, okay? Or maybe you, are, you live close to, to our branch at Brisbane or Dandenong or Footscray. If you already know the address, so prepare yourself and go. Go, don't lose time, don't waste time. If you don't know the address, go now to our website, uckg.org.au, and you will find there the addresses, and go, go fast. Don't, don't say, oh, another day I'll go. No, not another day, it's today. Today is the day. Say to yourself, today is the day. And if you say that, and if you do that, and if you, uh, if you uh, uh, um, go for it, well, God will see your attitude of faith and hope, and you will not be disappointed in your faith. What is God looking for in a person? So I said, look, I don't know, God, if you really exist. I don't know if I could reach you. I'm rotten. If I was in your place, God, I wouldn't forgive me because I'm rotten. If you really do reveal yourself, then the most valuable thing I have, the most precious thing I'll give to you. That's my word. If you do something for me, as long as I'm on earth, I'll serve you. Even if I have to drag myself. I lifted up my hands and said, my God, the same hand that I'm raising here is the same hand that took cocaine. It's the same hand that used drugs, that used crack. This mouth here that I'm speaking with is the same one that I used to do wrong things. This body of mine here, look at my clothes, look at the way I am. Why would you even want me, Lord? This is how I spoke to God. And at that moment, he confirmed inside of me, it's you that I want. And I went to this meeting. I sat way back in the church and I said, my God, it's just me and you. Either you come inside of me and transform me or I'll go back to drugs. I'll end up back on the street. I don't want that anymore. I told God that day, Lord, you know just how much I've done for Satan. How much I've served the devil how much of my life I'd given to him. If you would be with me, Father, I'll do double, triple for you. My life would be 100% yours. I fell on my knees in front of that television and I said, I said, God, I don't believe you exist. After all that I've gone through, after all that I've lived through, but if you really truly are what this man is saying here, then get me out of this situation. And then help me to forgive that person who did so much evil. So I got down on my knees and I asked the Lord Jesus Christ, just as he had mercy on Peter when he was drowning, if he could have mercy on me. God had mercy on me. It's more than a beautiful song. This is the sound that hits God's spirit. The sound of sincerity. A true humbleness. To these the Most High leans to hear their genuine words. At that moment I felt such a huge peace. It wasn't just a feeling. It was a peace that I'd never felt. And all my life, I felt so rotten, so small. And at that moment, I felt loved. And he said to me, from now on, you're not alone. I'm with you, my child. And I said, thank you, my father. And I remember what Bishop said. I remember that phrase. If you believe, you'll receive. If you don't believe, you will receive. I said, I believe. That's all I said. And the Holy Spirit came inside of me. It was such a certainty, such a huge joy, a happiness and a certainty that the Holy Spirit was there inside of me. Do you know what it's like to have God inside of you? I sure didn't. I thought, my God, how could it be? I didn't shout. 
I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel a clutch. I didn't. But I had a certainty that was so huge that God was with me that when I stood up, a joy came into me. It was immediate. It was immediate because I am such a huge peace inside of me, even though I was inside a prison. I'd been in prison for three months. I was in prison, but inside of me, that prison didn't exist anymore. At that moment, I felt a refreshing. I felt peace, the joy of life. It's indescribable, indescribable. It was so good. There's no way to describe it. The joy that I have for this God to be in my life, there's no way to describe. The Holy Spirit is my all. It's impossible for him not to hear a humble person. Univa Video, a road content of faith at the palm of your hand. Here we are going to teach you how to subscribe to the plans available so that you can access www.univavideo.com. Here you are going to select the plans and for $5.21 you can get two screens at once and for $6.59 you can get four screens at once. Now you press subscribe, insert now your location, followed by your phone number. After that, we are going to go to the payment method. So there, we have the options to add your card. So first, you type your name, second box, your card number, the expiry date, and the CVV. And after you complete this, you are ready to go. And once this is done, you can sign in again. And that's it. You are ready to explore a vast content of faith. Now, if you have an Android platform, or if you have an Apple device, you can also search for the app Univo Video. And so for this, you follow the same steps to subscribe like we've showed you before. By typing in your email address, your name, your password. Your card details. And that's it. You are ready, set to go. And watch this great content that's going to build your faith. Enjoy. My son had used the marijuana and he was acting weirdly. He would become very aggressive all of a sudden and start swearing and stuff. So I used blessed oil. I was anointing him when he's sleeping. I would anoint his clothes. I would wash his clothes with a bit of oil. And sometimes I would cook with the oil. I would put in the food, mix with the food and now He's changed with months. He's changed and he's now very good. He's respectful to me. Oil worked for me. We have been announcing the event of the year, which will happen on the 8th of September, when everyone will receive a small bottle like this one with the oil that was consecrated at the foot of the Mount Sinai. That uh, man that you see there, it's Bishop Randall. He, at the beginning of the year, January, he, together with other bishops from the Universal Church, they went to Mount Sinai and they consecrated an oil there at the foot of that holy place. 
and we have received from that oil and we have mixed with oil from here, Australia, and we have that oil on the altar of our branches, the altar of the church being presented to God and will remain on the altar the whole month of August. And then 8th of September, you shall receive a small bottle like this for free. Why we do this, you may ask. Why is the church doing that? Well, first place, because it's written in the word of God in different uh, passages of the Bible, the miracles and people, they used to be anointed with the oil and they would receive the blessings from God. For example, in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 14 says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And it says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. So that's why we are giving to everyone, we will give to everyone on the 8th of September, this blessed oil. So you may use it to anoint yourself, to anoint a, a, a family member who is sick or have addictions. You may anoint your house, you may anoint your bed. You, if you can sleep well at night, if you have insomnia, you can anoint your bed. If you have... Uh, 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 family issues, you, you can't have peace or be at peace with your spouse, you always argue, you even uh, say, uh, I would say, uh, um, um, you have uh, family violence, well, you will anoint your house, you will anoint your beds, okay, you can anoint the, the clothes of your, your, your children and pray and ask God to protect them, to deliver them. Many ways you can use this oil. We will give a few um, instructions how you can use the oil here in the programs and mainly on the day you will know how to use it using your faith to receive from God an answer. You, have, you don't have to pay nothing to receive the oil, absolutely nothing. All you have to do is to reserve in advance your bottle with oil. The, the QR code that you see here on your screen, you just scan that QR code and you make your, your you reserve your bottle with oil. Okay? You can even bring your guests with you and on the day, everyone will receive a free bottle with the blessed oil. Well, that's all for today. And tomorrow, same time, we'll be back with the Let There Be Light program. Just letting you know that our helpline number, the 02960298370, will remain available. And you can use that number to call us, to send us a message at any time, the day, afternoon, or in the evening. See you tomorrow. God bless you.